When I was a kid, I would hear my parents argue. They would argue a lot. And as a kid, I remember going into my closet and hiding from them because that was just traumatic for me. And some people, you know, stay in their closet. And after a while, I actually stepped out and I just, you know, saw them fight and always fighting. And that was just, for me, that was a bad experience. And today, that's my topic. Some people might say, that I have PTSD or post-traumatic stress. And there's been a lot of misconception on post-traumatic stress. They've always say it's combat related. It's always something about the military. And that's what I wanna inform you guys on. PTSD, but non-combat related incidents. And when we think about PTSD, a lot of people, oh, he's in the military, oh, this person. But it's, it's more than that. So let's define PTSD, post-traumatic stress. Post-traumatic stress, according to Webster's Dictionary, is defined as a psychological re reaction occurring after an experience, such as war, physical violence, or natural disaster, characterized by depression, anxiety, flashback, or reoccurring nightmares and avoidance of anything that reminds them about. In a way, it's a reaction to an event. And for some people, like me, when I was younger, I got over that event. But if it's a prolonged event, that's considered post-traumatic stress. Because for most people, the symptoms of just being hiding and just not going and facing the problem, it's prolonged and the reaction is continuous, and they don't, they don't move forward. In a way, it decreases, it gets worse as times go on. So it does affect a lot of people. So now let's, let's look at the causes of PTSD. Post-traumatic, there, there is a lot, a lot of causes. And you know, I can name a list, like war is one of them, natural distance, disaster, car, plane crash, sudden death of a family, rape, abuse, child neglect, sexual abuse. And in a way, it's, it's something traumatic to the person. Dr. James Dobbin, quote, you, we live with the interpretation of life, not the facts of life, end quote. And that, that is so true. What's traumatic to you is so different from what's traumatic to me. And it varies from each person. That's why there's a long, long list of traumatic events. It could be something like someone hits you and you felt it traumatic. Or it could be something like on a large care scale. We celebrated 9-11 and that was traumatic to our nation. It, it scared us. We canceled flights. We were, we were living in a PTSD moment because we're we're afraid of going to the airport. We're afraid of getting into a plane. Or it could be something small like the Boston bombing in April 15, 2013. That's about a year ago. And a lot of people were afraid of doing marathons. And in a way, it, it stops them from going and proceeding. So according to researchers from the Natural, Natural Institute of Mental Health, says about 76% of people who are exposed to massive violence produce PTSD. It occurs more in women. According to the same article from the National Institute of Mental Health states, PTSD affects about 7.7 .7 million Americans, and it can occur in many ages, including childhood. Women are more likely to develop PTSD than men. And there is evidence that this order run, may run in the family. So symptoms, what are the symptoms of PTSD? What can you look when you see someone? Do they have PTSD? Well, there are three, three, three categories which each symptoms define. It is um, reliving past dramas, avoidance, and an increase in your senses. So when you're reliving your 
past trauma is basically having flashbacks and reoccurring. It's like you're not moving forward. You're just remembering it every day. And then there, there are those people who try and forget it. They avoid it. Anything, they stop. They stop remembering it. And then people also develop this sense of, I guess, always being on alert. They're paranoid. They're looking around. They're like wondering what will happen next. And so there are, those are the three categories. You're reliving it, so more of a flashback. You are either avoiding it, and you're also aware with your, your emotions are more in tune, and you're feeling more. So, hmm, what are your options? What are your treatment options? Your treatment option is therapy. Just talking about the problem and just redefining everything. Because you don't live with you know, the facts of life. You live with an interpretation. And I want, just want to say, like, I want to give you guys, there's hope for people for PTSD because they're still breathing. There's always hope for anyone. And I leave you with hope. <laughs>